Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is Game God Fluent, bringing you episode one of my next scheduled LP, which we're going to be exploring for three real life days. I'm going to make as many episodes as get made. I'm not rushing. I'm going to take my time and explore the game, and we have three fun days to do it. So it's actually about 10 p.m. on my rest day. Um, really, I'm supposed to start tomorrow, but I mean, it's around midnight anyway, so might as well start now. I'm excited to play it. We're playing a game that it is a CRPG that supposedly um, leans more towards uh, the kind of Dungeons and Dragons CRPG rather than their last game, which was also a Western RPG, but kind of, you know, with preset characters and stuff. But this is from the creators of The Great Gaias. The devs are Horizons and Inc. And we are playing Gjallarhorn. So I don't even remember February 20th for 10 minutes. I mean, I don't think I saw any of the game at all. So I really don't know what to expect. But we can read the blurb here. Two years following the Second Great War, the Osirian Empire wrestles with finding a new ruler. While each faction sees a different future for their people, decisions are made by strength, not through ideals, and only the dead have seen the end of war. Ooh, sounds juicy. Alright, so let's just hit play, and uh, hopefully you guys join me on this journey, and let's see what happens. I'm going in just as blind as, uh, you know, any of you guys that have never seen this game. I don't even think, I, I didn't even get through character creation. I'm sure I didn't. So, boom. Horizons end. We're playing with mouse and keyboard. Unless, like, something crazy happens and I decide to play with uh, a controller, but... Okay, WASD and spacebar seem to work. Always dash, command remember, battle cam, sync monitor FPS. I mean, I... Off. Physical clock on, overworld, log fade. Log fade 10 seconds, I guess. 12 lines, battle log. Cool, there's a battle log. We can make it up to... Wow up to a lot of lines oh my gosh I'm not gonna go to the max so far it has six I'll put ten um, overworld log number of lines 12 lines yeah that's fine okay uh, let's go ahead and hit new game cool music so far all right Gjallarhorn okay create a custom character oh they are preset characters Lincoln, he's a norm he's a fighter. The class, oh, one second, guys. Oh, very nice music. What in the world is going on? Oh, my mouse is okay. Let's leave the mouse alone. We've got Lincoln and a fighter, mage, class difficulty very hard. Lots of D and D type skills: magic, missile, mage armor, blind, and poison. Interesting. There's traits, and of course attributes. Alvar the Rogue, that's a hard difficulty. Sherry's, the fighter is normal. Paloma the Mage, very hard. Elisa, hard. Then we have Kragulos, he looks like a, a Minotaur type dude with 17 strength. A very hard mage, Maeve. And a hard rogue, Roshi. So those are all the, created, uh, the preset characters. We're going to create a custom character. Create a character, yes, as I usually do when given the opportunity. Okay, first appearance. So we can be human or Osirian. Human. The presence of humans is commonplace within the Osirian Empire. Originally hailing from the Kingdom of Graham, more humans have found their calling to the north as the borders to the Empire have now opened in a loose alliance between the two countries. They are naturally quick learning and have a greater aptitude in learning new skills faster. Racial bonuses, bonus starting technique, and double job point growth. That's pretty powerful. The Osirians are native to the Gorgoth Mountains. The strength of the Osirians is legendary. Being naturally stronger and possessing more vigor than a human, they are a formidable foe in hand-to-hand -hand combat, though their cognitive abilities might be lacking. So they get some interesting racial bonuses. Armor class plus one, strength plus two, constitution plus four, intelligence and charisma minus two. So I think I'm going to be a human for now. 
even though Osirian is tempting. I hope there's some Osirian um, party members we can uh, recruit. Your gender is an aesthetic choice and will not affect your attributes in any fashion. We'll be male. We get choice of four, I guess. Um, I think that guy looks pretty good. Now we have three classes. Wait a minute, wait, what did that say? Okay, we have to do it again. Human male. It says, choose your starting class, which you can change any time outside of combat at your convenience. Choose starting skills and equip passive abilities based off your starting class. So we've got fighter. Ooh, this is, this is juicy stuff. A true warrior must know their roots if they ever expect to master powerful techniques in advanced classes. With abilities like hitting multiple enemies, taunting, and an improved rate of learning, the fighter is the perfect beginning choice when thrust into the heart of the Osirian Empire. Unlocks the knight, the monk, the gladiator. Features. Skills are melee based and focus on weapon damage and multiple targets or hits. Can taunt enemies into focusing on the fighter instead of weaker party members. Can learn skills faster with improved JP. Can equip most weapons and armor. Key attributes, strength, dex, and constitution, and normal difficulty. Some say the spark of magic only exists within a select few, but the basics of learn and study begins with a novice mage. Capable of cantrips and debilitating status ailments, the mage will build a solid foundation that will undoubtedly unlock the path to high sorcery. Unlots Acolyte, Arcanist, and Sage. Features. Skills are mana-based and focus on status ailments and protective spells. Can level faster with improved XP. Can only equip staves and rods and can only equip cloth armor. Key attributes are intelligence, wisdom, and charisma, and it's very hard. Interesting. And then there's Rogue. A born adventurer, this charismatic vagabond can unlock any treasure and steal any heart. While disabling traps and making a sneaky getaway might be at the forefront of their skills, their finesse in battle and agility-based attacks are not to be taken lightly. Unlocks the Scout, Thief, and Ranger. Skills are adrenaline-based and focus on dealing damage and stunning targets. Can use Tumble to escape from battle. Can utilize dexterity bonuses instead of strength with weapon finesse. Can equip lightweight weapons and armor. Key attributes, dex, charisma, and constitution. And it's hard difficulty. Um, I kind of like the idea of making a monk or a knight. Because I usually play a rogue character in RPGs, so I'm thinking maybe doing something different. And trying to unlock the knight class. So let's go with fighter for once. Okay, we can change ca uh, class, learn skills, and equip skills. Let's go ahead and learn skills. Feats, active and passive. We have 274 job points. Um, passives are doubles JP gained after battle. Equip medium armor. Toughness, armor class plus two. Improve mining, mining plus two. That's what we have for right now. Active, we have taunt. Provoke all enemies to focus their attacks on you for four rounds. Power attack, a powerful stance that trades attack bonus for damage four rounds. Cleave, attack your target twice in quick succession. Penalty minus five to attack roll on second strike. Trip, attempt to trip an enemy, leaving them open for a follow-up strike for one round. And a saving through of fortitude will negate it. And we can't get Dervish, it's 400, a spinning attack that damages all opponents twice. Brain Bash, we can get this, a powerful blow that can confuse and or stun. Confusion duration 5 rounds, stun duration 1 round, saving through fortitude and will. Pretty powerful um, feat right there. Um, I think, and I hope I don't break the game by doing this, but I think getting this immediately is probably going to make the most sense. Doubles job points gained after battle because then we can unlock all sorts of stuff. Now, it may lead to us having a weaker start, like, you know, we don't have an active skill that's really a go-to skill for us, but we will eventually have that and more mm, with improved job points. Uh, his name is Alvar. Um, yeah, and we still have 124 left, so... It's not going to be long before we can get, you know, power attack, or, or we can still get cleave. But I'm kind of thinking trip is what I want to go with. 
trip the enemy, leave them open to a follow-up strike. So, um, I don't think I'm gonna get cleave right now. Okay, so there's our jaw points. Um, equip the skills. Main, secondary, passive. Equipment, support, to command, a secondary, wow. Pretty interesting stuff. It's not a passive. Oh, it's a support. Go ahead and equip it so we can get a lot of feats in this game. Very Dungeons and Dragons esque. Um, okay, cancel out. Attributes. Choose your starting attributes through a point by system for your new character. Wow. This is awesome stuff. This is like a real deal character sheet. Unreal. Okay. Strength measures the character's muscle and pure physical power. This attribute is important to those who wish to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat, such as fighters, knights, monks, and paladins. The strength modifier affects physical attack rolls, damage rolls when using physical weapons, mining and woodcutting, and strength checks. You can see our stats at the top. We have 10 AC. 20 out of 20 health, 10 out of 10 mana. Nothing is affected right now. So um, if we put a point here, yeah, nothing kind of changes yet, but if we go like that, it changes. Attack roll goes to plus one, weapon damage goes to plus one. Dexterity. Um, and we can look at the right, what the fighter prefers. Skills are physical based and focused on weapon damage and multiple targets are hit. Oh, we already, oh no, we didn't read all this. Multiple targets are hits can taunt enemies into focusing on the fighter instead of weaker party members, can learn skills faster with improved JP, can equip most weapons except bows, staffs, and rods, cannot equip heavy armor, and strength and dexterity are important. So let's check out dex. Measures the character's agility, balance, and reflexes. This attribute is important to those who wish to use skills that require deftness, such as rogues and the thief, and are vital for ranged weapon users. It is also useful for characters that wear light or no armor. It modifies the ranged attack and damage rolls, burglary and stealing, reflexive saving throws, which I don't actually see them on, oh there it is, reflex saving throws and fortitude and will, armor class and initiative. Also very important, so if we put one there you see we get a one to reflex, one to woodcutting, stealing, mining and burglary, one to initiative, one to armor class, higher is better in armor class. Constitution measures a character's health and stamina. This attribute bonus increases hit points per level, so it's universally important to all characters. Constitution also affects the ability to resist status effects such as poison and other physical ailments. Modifies hit points, amount of hit points restored by using curative items, and fortitude saving throws. Intelligence determines how well a character learns and reasons. This attribute is important to casters as it determines how hard it is for a target to resist and increases the amount of mana points acquired per level. I think that's supposed to say resist magic, maybe? Intelligence also increases the amount of job points a character receives from battle. The intelligence modifier works on spell difficulty checks for offensive spells, mana points, job points, herbology, and knowledge. I'm just putting 12, like, oh, no, wait, I'm just putting 12 here as a placeholder, so that actually added one mana point, um, one to herbology and knowledge, and one, oh, is that it? Yeah. Uh, wisdom determines a character's willpower, common sense, awareness, and intuition. Casters that use healing magic benefit as it increases the hit points their spells can restore. Wisdom also increases the maximum amount of mana points per level and experience points a character receives from battle. Pretty interesting little tweaks on the uh, tried and true, um, you know, systems. Healing magic, healing magic's restoration, mana points, experience points, fishing, and will saving throws. I want that up there too. So that adds a point of fishing, point to will, saving throw. Then we have charisma. Measures the character's personality, charm, ability to lead, and appearance. Certain skills that require the spoken word, like the paladin and gladiator, are affected. This attribute bonus also increases the character's dialogue options and ability to speak to others. Wow. 
it modifies the spell difficulty check for paladins and gladiators, ability to acquire cohorts, cohorts through leadership, increases to taming and charm based skills like haggle and beg, and that immediately gets us a point in charm and taming. Wow, so this is pretty tricky for a fighter. I really want all of these, but Let's see if I can get away with maybe. Ten, let's see. Mm. I definitely want that up there. Um, wisdom is experience points. Herbology and knowledge and job points. Let's see if I maybe can go like that and that. Um, we have six points remaining. XP, um, you know what? Probably get away with that being an 11. Uh, and Charisma being a 16. Um... I'm going to be the weakest fighter ever if I don't get at least one point of constitution. Should probably get two. But then that leaves me kind of starving for some points. Um, wisdom, I, I might just go, you know, stay at ten there. And, um... Take another one one higher towards another level. Um, job points... Charm is at three. Burglary is at one. Fishing is at zero. Herbology and knowledge and mining are at two. Charm is at three. Taming is at three. Stealing is at one. Woodcutting is at two. Um, physical attack rolls, maybe. Like. I think that's about what I'd like to do, unless I go like... Oh, I can't raise that one point. It takes two points to raise it. Yep. So, we have one point remaining. Um, can't put it in intelligence, charisma. Um, I think I'd go dexterity. So, it's not too bad. I think that's what I'm going to go with. We should really get that one to fortitude. I usually don't mind sacrificing constitution. But yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's get out of there. Are you satisfied? Yes. Techniques. Choose a starting technique. These special abilities are gained every three levels, and unless you are a human, you can only acquire a total of four during the course of the experience. Wow. We've got Armor Focus. You have studied hard to understand the inner workings of your selected armor, granting you greater defense while wearing it. Benefits, you gain a plus one bonus to AC while wearing the chest piece of the selected armor type. Special, you may select this technique multiple times, but the effects do not stack. Each time you learn this technique, it applies to a different armor type. Hmm. Armor Specialization, you have honed your ability to wear and move while wearing a selected armor, granting you greater movement while wearing it. You gain a plus one to maximum dexterity when wearing the chest piece of the selected armor type. You may select this technique multiple times. It does not stack. Each time you learn it, its effects applies to a different armor type. You cannot gain armor specialization on cloth armor. Let me go ahead and light up a smoke here, guys. Hmm. And hit my water bottle. Critical focus. You have learned key points to strike on an opponent, giving you an edge to deal critical damage. Benefits, you gain a plus four bonus on all rolls to confirm a critical strike. Special, you cannot select this technique multiple times. Gathering bonus, 
focus, you've honed your skill in extracting items while using a gathering skill. You gain an additional item while using a gathering skill, and you may select it multiple times, and the effects are spec stackable. Leadership, you have the ability to gather loyal companions and devoted followers that can assist you in battle. You gain the ability to use Cohort in the overworld to gain a follower using a charisma-based charm skill. This cohort will fi fight alongside in battle and will level up with your character. This technique works similar to Tame. You can only have one follower or animal companion at any time. Wow, skill focus. You have studied hard to understand the masteries of skills in general. You gain a plus one bonus on all skill rolls you make for every skill there is. And you may select this technique multiple times and the effects are stackable. Spell Focus, you've studied hard to maximize the efficiency of your spells, gaining the ability to cast as if they were one level higher. Gain a plus one on spell difficulty checks when targeting an enemy. You can select it multiple times and it stacks. Stabilize, you've gained a great hardiness in battle, allowing you to survive an attack that would normally kill you. Once per battle, you will survive an attack that would normally bring your HP to zero and grant you plus three hit points to continue the fight does not protect against damage over time effects like poison or bleed, etc. You cannot select this technique multiple times. Tempered Focus. You have studied hard to understand the inner workings of your mind and body, granting better resistance to ailments. Plus, you gain a plus one, well, you gain a plus one on all saving throws, and it's stackable. You can select it multiple times. And Weapon Focus. You've studied hard to understand the inner workings of your selected weapon, granting you greater accuracy. You gain a plus one bonus on all damage and attack rolls using the selected weapon type. Plus one bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. You may select it multiple times. The effects do not stack. Each time you learn this technique, its effects apply to a different weapon type. So lots of very cool stuff, but the one that stood out to me that I really want to go for is leadership. We have the charm skill. We can get a cohort to fight alongside in battle that'll be fun um let's go leadership and please choose your bonus technique we get a bonus technique wow um bonus technique um weapon focus is interesting which weapon type would you like to focus on oh you just pick slashing piercing or bludgeoning that's interesting okay so rather than like an elven curve blade or a comma you know you pick a, a slashing instead hmm plus one to all saving throws survive deadly attack plus one to all skills an extra item better criticals more criticals and a plus one bonus to max dexterity when wearing the chest piece of the selected armor type. So we would rather, you know, armor focus. I'm gonna go weapon focus. So I always love doing critical type buffs, um, but I think weapon focus on slashing is like my ideal kind of character. Choose a background story for your character? Wow! These personality traits will affect the attributes and skills of your new character. Look at this! Unbelievable, guys. You did a great job with character creation. I have to say I'm already impressed. We have... We'll go through all these in this first episode of just creating a character. Bandit. They say crime doesn't pay, but you tried it anyway. In an attempt to escape the Kingdom of Greyhem from your pursuers, you flee to the frigid north beyond the reach of the monarchy to a strange new land. Unfortunately, once again your trade has landed you in trouble after a caravan robbery goes awry. Quickly you learn the fierce retribution of the north and now you find yourself imprisoned within the Osirian Empire. Plus two base attack bonus, very nice, but minus one to all saving throws. Black blacksmith, strike while the iron is hot. You came of age in the city of Astral and apprenticed under the renowned blacksmith Gavin Rems. Upon learning that the Kingdom of Graham was opening trade with the Osirian Empire, you take the opportunity to branch off to set out on your own and fulfill your dream of owning your own smithy. How were you to know that they expected you to work for free? 
Nowadays, the only steal you see is within the Warden's Dungeon. Plus one strength, plus two job points per battle, minus two charisma. Bookworm, you spent your life with your nose in a book. Inspired by the stories of the recently appointed king and his companions, you decided to head out into the world on an adventure of your own. Unfortunately, even with all your book smarts, you couldn't outwit the Osirian slavers as they carted you off to a city called Haven in the heart of their empire. Hopefully, your knack for learning won't help you plan an escape from slavery. Will help you plan escape. Uh, hopefully, your knack for learning will help you plan an escape from slavery because your muscles certainly won't. Plus four XP and JP per battle, minus one strength. That's interesting. Bully, life was tough growing up, so you took it out on everyone else. Having heard tale of the Osirian gladiators and possessing no direction in your own life, you decide to travel north into the Osirian Empire to use the only thing you possess, brute strength. You wanted to test your might, and so you did against the first Minotaur you saw. Sadly, he had friends. Nevertheless, what you lack in intelligence, you make up for in brawn. You may have even won had his buddy not joined in. Plus two strength, minus one intelligence and wisdom. Follower of Malviticus. You have spent your entire life devoted to defending a lie. Rather than facing the consequences of your actions, you decide to abandon your post. As a former soldier of the Validian Empire, you wandered aimlessly, only to end up stranded within the Osirian Empire. Rather than following your comrades back to the Kingdom of Graham, you've chosen isolation. Armed with only your wit and intellect, you survived for years in the Gorgath Valley living off the land. Recently, a surge of slavers and other unwanted guests have entered your once peaceful homestead. Plus one intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Plus two herbology, but minus one strength, dex, and con. Pretty interesting. Impoverished noble. Your father lost a family estate in a sovereign horse race. You have lived the life of excess in the lap of luxury, relying on servants and personal guards to see you through your days. Now evicted from the opulence of your estate and ejected from a life of high society, you sell what precious little remains in an attempt to start anew. Learning nothing from your father's mistake, you decide to try your luck gambling at the gladiator arenas in the Osirian Empire. Unfortunately, your charm couldn't get you out of a bet between two Osirian slavers. Plus one charisma, plus two knowledge. Um, whoops. Minus one constitution. Laborer, a jack-of-all-trades, master of none. Always a hard worker, though not the sharpest tool in the shed, you've been a hired hand the entirety of your adult life. Upon hearing rumor of a risky job with a sizable payout in the northern mountains, you decide not to let another missed opportunity pass you by. You were contracted to help with the construction of a new road through the Gorgath Mountains into the heart of the Osirian Empire. It turned out some of the locals you met along the way had different plans for you. Plus one constitution, plus two mining, woodcutting, and fishing. Minus one intelligence. Loner. Life is too short to argue with stupid people. Avoiding the company of others, you tend to excel by yourself. With the growing populations in the southern cities, you head north seeking isolation and meaningful experience. Traversing north of the Gorgath Mountains, you found fairly easy. Escaping them, not so much. Now you'd wish you'd brought a friend. Plus two all attributes while not in a party. Minus one all attributes when traveling with others. Interesting. Lunatic. We all go a little mad sometimes. You were sent to the new... Eldrithin Acolytes for observation. After ongoing their treatment, you took the first opportunity to escape. Once again, adhering to the voices in your head, you followed them into the heart of the Osirian Empire. Sadly, mistaking a hunting party of minotaurs for a herd of cattle ended you up in the cells of Haven. Who ever heard of talking cows? Plus one armor class and strength, minus one wisdom and intelligence. Minor. You grew up in Miner's End. What did you think was going to happen? As the Mithril Mines continued to expand in the Northern Territory, an unexpected cave-in ended your companions' careers permanently and landed you on the wrong side of the Gorgoth Mountains. You awake to find yourself in shackles in the possession of someone called the Warden in the heart of the Osirian Empire. Plus one strength, plus four mining, minus one intelligence. Mountaineer, climbing the highest peaks in the most dangerous conditions is your life's passion. Having scaled the tallest peaks in the known world, you have settled your sights on the notorious death peaks of Gal Marta. However, to get there, you must first cross the entirety of the Osirian Empire. After a few days' trek across the frozen waste, the fire from your bivouac, bivouac, I don't know what that is, bivouac, brought the unwanted attention of Haven Sentinels. Plus one strength, dex, and con. Plus two wood cunning, minus one intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Runaway novice. 
There's only so much one can learn from a book. Studying for years in Sorbithia has driven you stir-crazy. After learning of ancient blood magic practiced in the Osterian Empire, you decided to discover the truth for yourself. Had you paid more attention in school, you might have learned of the dangers surrounding the sacred groves of the blood druids. Learning a few more spells might have also helped to get past the slavers. Plus one intelligence wisdom, plus two knowledge, minus two strength. Self sword. If you're good at something, never do it for free. A high-paying merchant has offered good coin to safely see him through the mountains of the Osirian Empire. This much coin could pay for the vacation to Dibbledorf you always wanted. After your caravan was ambushed by Haven Sentinels in the Highlands, your quick reflexes and fighting prowess gained you favor with your captors. The merchant, however, was not so lucky. Plus one attack bonus, plus one reflex, minus one wisdom. Traveling merchant. A good merchant understands the powers of supply and demand. The Kingdom of Graham has shown interest in the newly opened Osterian Empire. Through, though the journey is said not to be for the faint of heart, the chance to return with exotic goods from this foreign land and the kind of profit it would bring could be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. As it turned out, your caravan was ambushed while crossing the highlands, but you were able to sweet-talk your captors into letting you live. Being alive as a slave is better than being dead, isn't it? Plus two charisma, plus two charm, minus one strength. Trickster, don't call me a thief or rogue, I'm merely a survivor. You've dabbled in sleight of hand, eavesdropping, and practical jokes, all to hide your true motives as a burglar and charismatic con artist. After a warrant was issued for your arrest, the Kingdom of Graham quickly lost its luster, and you decided to head north to the Osterian Empire to escape the King's justice. Unfortunately, the Osterians didn't understand the concept of asylum, and you were thrown into the Warden's Dungeon anyway. Plus two decks, plus one burglary and stealing, minus two con. Unknown, who are you? Where you've been and what you know are a mystery, no adjustments. Wandering Minstrel, if you get confused, listen to the music play. You've been known to woo the people with a song or two in taverns during your short stays on your journey to spread love and light. Although a recent affair with a particularly ravishing mistress of a nobleman has left you with a heavy bounty upon your head, deciding to observe the establishment of a new trade route through the Osirian Empire, you boarded the earliest caravan out of Graham. Along the way, your carefree attitude took a turn for the worse when you were captured by slavers. Your song and dance, it seems, did little to impress the Osirian warlords. Plus one dex, plus two charm, minus one strength. So that's all of the uh, biographies. Um, I'm just going to look at the adjustments. Well, let's see which ones we kind of gravi gravitate to. Um. Loner sounds pretty interesting too, because there's going to be times when we're on our own and that will give us a plus two to all attributes but minus one when traveling with others. Mountaineer. I don't like the minus to those stats. <clears throat> minus two strength. A plus one intelligence and wisdom. Sellsword is interesting. Minus one wisdom. Traveling merchant. That's pretty crazy. We can recruit everybody with that. I don't just want to go for the best adjustment that I think is the best, but kind of more role-playing it. Um, Wandering Minstrel. Um, I might go bookworm for the simple fact that, like, let's say I've spent reading time reading fantasy novels in this world. Since I guess they don't have video games, right? And then we decided to head out into the world on an adventure of our own. We couldn't out with the Osirian slavers as they carted us off to a city called Haven in the heart of their empire. Hopefully your knack for learning will help you plan an escape from slavery because your muscles certainly won't. I'm going to go ahead with bookworm. Plus 4 XP and JP per battle, minus 1 strength. Yes, it takes our strength down pretty bad, but it's okay. Choose how experienced you are and choose a name and birthday for your character. Finalize. Okay, it's Alvar, not Alvards. I'm going to be... Um, uh, 
Balzerian. Mm. Eldarian is the name of uh, Aragorn and Arwen's son. Um, I didn't know that when I used to w use that as a name. Eldarion, Elzarion, Elzar. I used that um, not even knowing that that was from Tolkien. How about Elzar? Elzar is cool. Um, what month were you bur born? Um, April showers bring May flowers. Let's go the flower month. What day were you born? 90. Um, four, I guess. Your birthday is May 4. Is that correct? Sure. Core rules. Okay, now we get to choose what we want. Core rules. All systems are set to default. Enemies have all the tools the player does. Choose this difficulty only if you aren't afraid to die. No adjustments. Story mode. For those who wish to just enjoy the story, base armor class is increased. Rapid health, mana, and adrenaline regen. Enemy crits have no damage multiplier. Can save anywhere at any time. Normal, recommended for new players. Enemy critical hits of no multiplier. Can save anywhere at any time. And Masochist. For players very familiar with the mechanics in Gjallarhorn, you will die a lot. Creatures start at their maximum challenge rating. All enemies become smarter and tougher with a more varied moveset. Do not choose this difficulty for your first playthrough. We're going to go core rules. And I like that though, that they become smarter and tougher with a more varied moveset. That's very cool. That's some Baldur's Gate type stuff. Core rules. Difficulty, yep. Accept his character. Alright, we get one final look. We're not going to be doing much fishing, but we'll be charming and taming our way. There's reputation, karma, and fame. And there's different um, reputation with Anubia, Haven, Osi Osiris, Krog, Kragor, Oslin, Oslin, and Zelos. Wow, look at this, man. This is a straight-up D&D character sheet. I love it. This is what I want in RPGs for sure. Alright, see our strength is at 13 because we got the one point off. Our total damage is 2 to 5, 1d4 plus 1. Yeah, looks good to me. Our title is a peon, level 1. We need 1,000 XP to go up a level. Yeah, looks good. Passive traits... Uh, we can equip medium armor, we can use crossbow, longsword, shortbow, and flail, and we have improved job points. Weapon focus on slashing, we're human, we can equip light armor, spear, longbow, large shield, short sword, and small shield. We have no element or state resistance. Oh, okay, yeah, good to go. Except, boom. Now we're going to go through the intro, and I'm going to try to save as soon as possible, not to make this episode too long. Um, wow, love the graphics too. Let's see if I can... I guess I can't save. Okay, but... Uh, well, bear with me, guys. It is winter in the year 1009. It's July on a Thursday, the 13th, at midnight. I'm sorry, at noon. Um, check our inventory... All oh, we have nothing. Class. Oh, I won't get into that status. We just saw that. Um, our abilities are null and void. Our equipment is null and void. Oh wait, we have slave chains. Oh, look at all those equipment slots, son. Are you kidding me? Whoa! Earring, necklace, bracelet, miscellaneous. Cloak. Bravo. Spalders. Ooh. They're bringing the heat with this one. Wow. Okay, we're wearing slave chains and clothes. Um, well, let me see if I can go look at them. Yeah, equip. And there's augmenting, too. Uh, clothes. It doesn't... How do I see what they do? Slave chains... Locked armband bearing the mark of a slave's owner can only be removed by the warden. Okay. Codex. Oh, we're going to be learning about stuff. Cool. 
Lots of lore to go around. A bestiary, a world map. Quest journal. Ooh, saucy. Love it. All right, um, who are you? Lively Rogue. How goes it, boy? First time in the Warden's Dungeon, eh? Let me give you a little advice, seeing as you're new around here. Whoa. Okay, we well, we'll just ask everything. How do I access the menu? You can access the menu by pressing the, pressing the cancel back button on the keyboard, which is X or escape by default, and you can close it using the same button. The choices include the inventory, class, status, abilities, equipment, and codex. The codex menu has all the information and tutorials you will need if you ever need to reference something. How do I interact with people and objects? Yeah, spacebar. You can interact with people and objects while facing them using the OK button on the keyboard, which is spacebar, or enter by default. Certain non-player characters, NPCs, will frequently have an option available called an action, which will become apparent when interacting with them. Whether this action is buying items, stealing, or begging, it is done by selecting action. How do I learn skills? Learning skills can be done by selecting Learn Skills in the Class menu. While in the menu, you can cycle between the learnable skills and the different classes unlocked to you by using the left and right arrow keys. You will expend job points to learn skills for each of the classes that you obtain in battle while using it as your main class. How do I equip skills? From the class menu, you can equip skills to furnish your character with different abilities that you learn. The main and secondary abilities are dictated by your class and subclass. Oh, there's a subclass. And you can only assign a subclass in classes you have an adept bonus with. The first command skill will unlock if you have learned the class specific skill, and it can never be changed aside from changing the main class. The second command skill can be equipped from the pool of command skills the character has acquired. Support skills are very useful that have a constant effect upon the player, such as counterattacks and improved stats. You can only slot a single one of these abilities, so use them wisely. Equipment skill. Skills allow the player to customize the playstyle even further by allowing gear outside the class normal to be utilized. Wow. An example would be allowing a mage class to, to, to use a two-handed weapon or the like. Oh man, then I would have... We might be redoing this, guys. I I'll make it quick if we redo it. I won't read everything again, but... I did not know that. So I can potentially have a mage... Like a battle mage or something. You gain new passive skills as the character's level gets higher, up to a maximum of four. These abilities can range from state protection, increased attributes, and much more. The combination of effects and builds that can be made with passive skills are almost limitless. And as more classes unlock, there will be little that the player can't do. Wow, son. I'm getting excited. <clears throat> How do I change classes? You can change your class and subclass from the class menu. At first, only fighter, mage, and rogue are available, but obtaining the adept bonus from these classes will start to unlock different paths and many more abilities to learn. Gathering JP from battles, the only way to unlock new abilities and classes. How do I use items? The inventory menu will bring up the items that you have acquired during your travel and battles. There are categories to help organize the inventory, and you can further sort the items by either alphabetic order or a strategic list. Pressing the OK button will bring you into the item list and pressing it again on a usable item will allow you to pick a target within the party. Nothing for now, thanks. A life lesson. Remember the basics and you may get out of here alive. <clears throat> okay, that's all you say. Alright. Um. Okay, do we go head out? found a dose well until I can save <clears throat> a minor healing potion that restores health 1d8 plus 4 plus con modifier are you kidding me in an RPG maker I think this is that is amazing that they're going the full D&D &D route <clears throat> Paloma P please don't hurt me gonna hurt you Paloma Maeve leave me be you look interesting a Syrian rogue if you had a thieves tool you could open all kinds of things including the door behind the guard <laughs> interesting what is burglary 
burglary total is calculated by adding the burglary skill in the charisma modifier. Burglary can increase the player's chances to use disabled device and lockpicking to remove traps and unlock non-magical devices. Failing to disable a trap can often result in triggering the mechanism which can cause damage and negative status effects. While failing to unlock a device may result in breaking the thieves tool. How to use charm. Charm total is calculated by adding the charm skill in the charisma modifier. Charm can allow the player to use persuasion to alter conversations with NPCs, haggle NPCs to sell items at a discount, and even beg for gold. Failing charm-based skills can neg negatively affect your karma and fame. How do you steal something? Stealing is a dexterity-based skill used to pickpocket NPCs. It is calculated by adding the dexterity modifier to the stealing skill. Certain NPCs require a higher level in order to steal from them, but the higher the risk, the better the reward. If you fail to steal and get caught, your fame, karma, and town reputation will suffer. Dang, son, that's enough. Let me know if you need anything else. Inigo. Oh, what a mess this is. What are you looking at? Can a man ponder in peace? A big old chest. Melancholy merchant. Oh, this is dreadful. My mother told me of the dangers going to the Osirian Empire, and I laughed at her. I laughed. I'm, not sh I'm sure not laughing now. Oh, I didn't notice you standing there. But now that I do, you really need to work on your style and possibly get some armor on. You know how to dress yourself, I hope. How do I equip armor and weapons? The equipment menu will give you access to equip or clear gear from your character that you have bought, stolen, or crafted. After pressing the OK button at the equip menu, you'll be given the choice to equip or augment your gear. Choosing equip will bring you to 19 slots for armor, weapons, and gathering tools. You will have armor and weapon restrictions based on which class you are, but this can be bypassed by using the unique equipment skills. What are augments? Not only do they change the name of your gear, they also deliver unique and solid attributes and resistances depending on what they are attached to. Any piece of gear that has one or more diamonds to the left of its name is able to be augmented. You can equip augments into gear by pressing the arrow keys to the right while selecting gear in the equip menu. Augments can always be removed and replaced in gear to maximize customization. Cool. How do I optimize my gear? From the equipment menu, you can choose to optimize your equipment. The optimized system will automatically equip your character based off what you possess in your inventory. You can pick physical, magical, or defense as optimizing solutions using this system. Or you can take your time using the equip menu to tailor each piece individually to your needs. What is armor class? The higher the armor class, the harder it is to hit. Every character starts with a minimum of 10 AC and it increases based off the armor you wear and the dexterity modifier. Heavier armor will have great bonuses on AC, but will incur penalties on the amount of dexterity that can affect AC. This is called maximum dexterity bonus. What is attack roll and damage? The attack roll is a 1d20 roll that dictates if you can hit a target with an attack versus its armor class. It's calculated by taking a 1d20 roll plus the user's base attack bonus and adding it to the strength modifier. If the resulting number is larger than the target's AC, the attack is successful. Other factors may affect the attack roll, such as equipment, augments, spells, and status effects. Upon a, upon a successful attack roll, the character then rolls for damage based off the ability they were trying to use. The damage rolls are different based off of many factors, including weapon damage, strength modifier, abilities, spells, and states. This damage is then applied to the target's hit points. If a target's HP reaches zero, they die. It's quite alright. Don't forget to accessorize! Received leather britches. Cool. I can go ahead and put them on. Um, I'm glad that it shows us in the inventory like where they are. Pants. Pants made from light leather. Shows all the classes that can use them. Armor class 2, max dex 6. So, max dex is 6 and armor class goes to 13. I wish I could save right now. I wonder if I end the game if I'll be able to save. Do you guys think it'll make like a... Not that it would hurt anything. Options. No, how about end game? <clears throat> it doesn't warn me. Oh, record. Oh, we can't record right now. Core rules must use church. Okay, well. Let's continue then. 
large Osirian. Hey, hey, settle down, pal. Don't get all worked up. You've got to find a hobby or something if you want to stay right down here, mate. I took up thieving, I did. Had a mentor for a while who taught me a trick or two. Why don't you give these a try? I smuggled them in when I was caught. You can thank me later, but don't ask where I had them hidden. Three stone thieves tools. Let me know if you find anything interesting, bro. The name is Sven, by the way. Happy to help. Found a dose. Um, let's put the thieving tools on. So what I think I'm going to do is just end the game here. And then next time go through everything really quickly and get back to this point. Right? Makes sense. Um, are we don't equip the thieving tools? Really? Oh, right. A primitive set of thieves tools that allows the use of lock picking and disabled device can break on a failed attempt. So I'm going to save here, guys. Well, I'm going to exit here. I think we may spend some more time in character creation next time not like reading everything probably but just maybe trying to make a mage that can also do melee i always like a character like that but we'll see but there's a lot of options to this game i am already knowing that i'm going to love this and we're definitely going to love this guys so stay tuned it's going to be an awesome journey i am sure of it so stick with me next time we will explore more uh, probably even get past this point and make our first save but thank you so much for watching guys if you made it this far i appreciate you guys so much you mean the world to me much love and peace and joy to all of you um hope you enjoyed and i hope you're going to join me and enjoy together with me this fantastic offering of a unique polished gem of a crpg so hope to see you guys next time take it easy and uh stay cool Bye-bye.